Hey, Scorpio, this is a whirlwind month for you, packed with potential. It really is super intense. Now, of course, your Rulo Pluto, Rulo, <laughs> your Rulo Pluto has transformed and shifted. And for you, that is, it's quite cathartic. You must feel like your roots are shaking, but hopefully in a positive way. And you are like, Okay, I'm thinking about now making massive changes when it comes to my home and family. And this month is bringing all of that to a peak. We get a flavour this month of what the next 20 years of Pluto and Aquarius is going to be like. And there are some key dates for you to focus on. On February the 5th, Mercury, the planet of communication, is joining forces with Pluto full on. You are having potentially one of the most important conversations you've had if not in your life, for a long time, about home and family. And there's a revelation there. There's a full stop there. There's a transformation there. Then, on the 9th, the new supermoon is incredibly powerful for you, particularly if you want to manifest when it comes to your home and family and you want to let go of something that's no longer serving you. Sometimes it's just an idea. You know what I mean? Like, we, we get caught up in an idea and we think, right, let's say, I don't know, you've thought about living in America all your life or living in England all your life or or making a great move. And then like you've thought about it for the past 15 years and then actually it's not what you want anymore, but you're still holding on to it because it's imprinted in your brain. This new supermoon, and that's just, you know, this can be in many ways. This can be, you know, anything to do with your home and family. This new supermoon can allow you to let go of that and conjure up a new desire and really powerfully manifest the new desire. So pay attention on February the 9th and think about what you want to let go of and really think about what is true now about what I want when it comes to where I want to live and, and my family. You know, and family doesn't mean blood necessarily. I mean, we, we live in a world now where thankfully some of our best friends are like family, but it's like readjusting, relooking, navigating your future in a different way. Uh, we have Mars conjunct Pluto on Valentine's Day. So that's going to be a very big day. You've got all the feels on Valentine's Day. It's like such an intense volcanic feeling for you on Valentine's Day. What are you going to do with that? Make it positive and, you know, don't let your temper take over on that day, whatever you do. Use it to feel like a phoenix rising. We then have Venus conjunct Pluto. You're making some decisions about your relationships, your one-to-one -one relationships, what makes you happy and what brings you harmony. And there is great sense of passion in the air when Venus and Mars join forces on February the 22nd. So it is almost as if maybe a new passion is coming into your life. That could be passion for a project to do up a home, go and live in the woods. You know, do it doesn't have to be a passion with a person, but you know what? It could be. So this month has very, very intense moments for you and moments where it's about letting go. It's about recreating your life. It's about having the energy, the strength and the wisdom to move forward. Now, the energy does shift on the 19th when you're feeling very bouncy, optimistic, happy, frisky, open to sensuality, open to laughter and creativity as the sun enters Pisces, then Mercury enters Pisces and you're like, Ooh, I'm at and Venus and Mars uh, a conjunct and Aquarius that day, I mean, on the 22nd. So you've got this sort of passion to change and you're also optimistic. So that is very positive. Now, the full moon on the 24th uh, has you thinking about the groups of people in your life, has you thinking about your presence online in all its manifest forms. You might even think about coming offline altogether and going within and reevaluating what you want for the future. But that full moon is a great day for socialising as well. So do what you will on that full moon, but it will be a peak experience. Now, finally, on the 28th of February, we have the Sun and Mercury joining forces in your joy, happiness and creativity zone. And then Mercury conjunct Saturn in your joy, happiness and creativity zone. You're committing to your happiness in some way, which is very powerful, very wonderful and very exciting and you deserve it. And it's time for you to really commit to your happiness and your joy. On 29th of February, of course, we're in a leap year. Mercury is sextile Jupiter. So we have this moment of, again, just optimism and some very pleasurable news coming to you connected to a one-to-one -one relationship. 
exciting times, particularly for you. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. So here is the deck. I love the box. Got some of the tarot heroes on the front that are in my deck, which I'll tell you about later. It is flip top. How fabulous is that? I love that. And then you have the little booklet here. Little nuggets of information about each card. Here they are. Notice the gold. The Fool. The Magician. The High Priestess, which is so important because it is Pamela Coleman Smith. She was the illustrator of the original Ride Away. And I have three lovers cards. The Chariot, Strength, the Hermit, various heroes here. This is Anime Wong. So I've got this leaflet that comes with a pack. It gives you one line of straight to the point wisdom about it. But this is the book. And I'm so pleased with it because what I aim to do with this deck is to inspire your own psychic ability, but also to empower you and uplift you every day with the message of the card. Let's take a look inside. In it, we've got the meanings and readings. All my knowledge is in this book, all my love and all my heart. I talk to you about my journey and I talk to you, most importantly, about how to dive in and learn the tarot really quickly, because that's the way I roll. Very easy guide. I talk to you about reversals and how to empower yourself and feel the love of the tarot. And then there's a little space where you can do your readings. And at the back, really importantly, I talked to you about all the card characters, the amazing things they did in the world to inspire us. Just to give you a taster, let's pull a card to see what we've got. Oh, that is a great card. The Nine of Cups, the Wish card. The most basic interpretation of the Nine of Cups is that you're being given a massive cosmic yes. This book is my life's work. I've been doing tarot basically from when I was born. It's been a lifelong passion and you could, you're always learning when it comes to tarot and I've tried to put everything I know and and all the magic and how you can learn quickly. You can get them from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and potentially order them from your local bookshop and support your local bookshop. These carry my heart and my soul, and I thank you for being on this journey. You inspired me to do it, because I wanted to have a inclusive deck. So I thank you for being my inspiration.